All right, today we're gonna to talk about five things about general filter setup, PDD balance, PDD gain, how to solve any desyncs, and the impacts of D-shot idle. Number one, filter sliders being up is not the same as filters being turned off. So as you can see here, I just have a quick setup on my UAV Tech filter calc tool. And if you're not familiar with this tool, I'll drop the link down below. If you have Excel, you can open it and move around the filters just like you can in Betaflight and see what the delays are and compare some stuff. But for here, I'm just using it as a example of the difference between up versus off. A while ago, I did a video on Betaflight filter strategies. I'll make a link to that in a card in the upper right. And in that, we talked about how on the gyro, you really want to crush all the peaks of noise. And on the D-term, you use your low-pass filters because there's some characteristics of the D-term that you're going to need low-pass filters for. As you move your filter sliders up on the gyro and the D-term, it just moves those low-pass cutoffs up. So it's basically less filtering at the farther these sliders go up. However, when you get up to the top of 2.0, that's not the same thing as being off. You can see down here we have still at this filter slider being all the way up to 2.0 and assuming a 50% throttle, we have 0.2 and 0.3 milliseconds of latency. Well, that's 0.5 milliseconds of latency. It's actually a little bit more than that. And that's not the same thing as just turning these off. So if I turn these off, you can see, obviously I'm gonna save that 0.5, it's almost 0.6 milliseconds of latency here. And it's gonna drop down from here, it was a 2.5 down to 1.9. That's a significant savings. And when your gyro filters all the way up at 2.0, those low passes really aren't doing any attenuating anyways. Just knowing what the cutoffs are and things of that nature. If you're up that high, you might as well just turn them off. And in that scenario, it might be a better setup where you just have your D-term slider down lower. So instead of having both at a 2.0, it might actually be better to turn off your gyro filters when you're getting up above a 1.5 and just slide your D-term slider down to like maybe a 1.0, 1.2, 1.3, something of that nature. Number two, PDD balance. So PDD balance in Betaflight is easier than ever with the sliders to adjust that. And PDD balance totally has to deal with the power to weight ratio of your quad. What many don't know though, as you go from smaller classes like the whoop class to the two, three, four, five inch, six inch, seven inch, all the way up to the nine, 10 and X class, your power to weight ratio is actually kind of looks like an arc where it comes down and goes up and then back down. Around a three, four, five inch, depends on the motors and how heavy the craft is. That's where you have your optimal, your peak, power to weight ratio. A whoop class with ducks and all that kind of stuff has a really low power to weight ratio. And then again, on the seven, eight, nine, 10 inch X class, they also have a low power to weight ratio. I'm not exactly sure what the X class, I believe they do, but with the arms being so long, maybe the power to weight ratio goes back up. Ultimately, you can use that knowledge to just make general adjustments to your sliders here. So for a whoop class, essentially you want to have a one-to-one -one PDD balance. So with D-min turned on, you're going to want to have your D-min and your P-gain about the same. So that's going to be a 1.8 about on your PDD balance. If you have D-min turned off, then it would be around a 1.4. So it depends if you have D-min on or off. Just keep in mind when you have D-min on that your D-min value is your active, a little bit above that is your active D-gain, not your D-max. That's only in uh, full stick moves. Now with the D-min back on, as you're getting closer to a five inch, you're gonna bring that power to weight ratio down. And in a five inch scenario, you're usually looking around a 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, maybe about a one. The defaults are really tuned around a, a five inch, but it's not with a really high power to weight ratio. So it's somewhere in between 0 0.7 to one is generally a five inch. Again, depends if you have GoPro on there, how powerful your motors are, 6S, 4S, all that kind of stuff. But generally, be looking between a 0.7 to a one for your PD balance for like a three, four, five inch. The lower you have this slider, the better for performance. So we wanna always try to be trending that slider down, even in the whoop class, the more you can move it down. In the whoop class though, if you'd be down here around a 1.0 and lower, you're going to get bounce back with your whoops. It's just how it's gonna work because their power weight ratio is really low. Typically, I should say. So again, for a five inch, anywhere from 0.7 to a 1.0 is typically your PD balance for the power to weight ratios we're usually talking about with that kind of classic quad. Now, as you go back up six, seven, eight inch, typically on a seven inch, I'm seeing about the same as the whoop class. So you're gonna see a 0.8 for your PD balance with demon on. 
And with Demon off, you're looking about a 1.4. So use that as a guide, as kind of as you're going from the smaller classes up to a five inch and then back down, you're gonna be moving this slider down and then sliding it back up as you're in the higher, you know, six, seven, eight, nine inch, things of that nature. Number three, PDD gain strength. Now again, PDD gain strength is all centered around that power to weight ratio. The more power your quad has, the lower your PDD gain strength will be. The less power your motors have and the higher the weight, the higher your PDD gain strength will need to be. Now this is just the general magnitude of your P term and your D term together. You can see as I move this slider, both move up and down and it's holding this balance. So if I have this balance set up here, it's gonna hold that ratio between the P term and the D term. It's just gonna slide them up and down. Generally speaking, the PDD gain magnitude is centered around a six inch lightweight racing rig. And then you might be moving this slider down for the PDD balance again a little bit, but right here in the center, that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna usually see the Ds in the low 20s. Of course, keeping in mind, this is with D-min on. Now, as you get a heavier, more like a freestyle rig, you're gonna be pulling this P and D gain up. So you're really gonna be starting in that scenario it's gonna have a wide window, but generally in the 30s from what I see, 40s, maybe even up into the 50s, you can see this maxes out at 46 and 50. It is not that unreasonable to have a 5S, pretty heavy 700 gram GoPro holding, you know, high power, but really high weight quad that requires for good prop wash performance, your demon gains up in the 40s and 50s. You will know if you're too high, you will start to see the oscillating trills and then you need to back it down. So be just listen for the oscillating trills and, and slide that back down. Again, that's with Demon on. If we turn Demon off, you can look here. You're gonna have generally about a 0.1.6. You know, you're starting to get up in the 40s and 50s, uh, anywhere between a 1.0 and a you know 1.7, generally with a five inch freestyle rig. They're gonna be somewhere in between there for uh, good prop wash performance with the appropriate D gains. Now, of course, this requires, when you're talking about getting higher D gains, you have to have a decent filter set up and a decent rig where you're not having all kinds of frame resonances and vibrations that you know you have to over filter the heck out of it. So, of course, mileage is gonna vary here. So that covers the high power to weight ratio kind of stuff. What about the whoops and the larger crafts? Again, the low power to weight ratio stuff. Well, that is even higher D gains. You're gonna start in the, generally is in the 50s and 60s for like your six, seven, eight, nine inch crafts. I've seen, you know, generally on the seven inch crafts, we're talking somewhere in the high 50s and the 60s for your D terms here. Again, with D men off and then with D men on, you're gonna be just focusing same numbers here with D men showing right here. So, you, you know, you bring this up even higher and you can see you kind of max out. What I generally use is the master slider. If I'm maxing out here, I just use that master to slide up to give myself some more range here. And that kind of just boosts everything up at the same time. So between the two, when you have a low power to, power to weight ratio, you're moving this slider up, you're usually gonna get look, look for a one-to-one -one between the D-min gain and the proportional. And of course, with a low power to weight, we're gonna bring this up. We're gonna look for somewhere where we're in the high 50s, low 60s for your D-min gains here for, again, those low power to weight ratio crafts. Uh, I've seen whoops up as high as 80 for your D-min gains. Uh, I've seen some big octocopter kind of stuff up you know, in the, the 80s, but generally the seven inches and, and things of that nature is 60s, maybe 70s if the, the power weight is pretty low, but you know, you're, you're trending towards the higher end, not the lower end. Number four, desyncs and BL heli settings. So if you ever have any motor desyncs, I would just go right to BL heli. This is if you have BL heli S, what you would go ahead and do is reduce your startup power. Generally the default startup power is 0 0.5. I would go ahead and reduce that to 0 0.125 and it should clean them right up. If you're on BL Heli 32, we're going to go look at ramp up power and we're just going to bring that down to around 12. That's basically the same setting as the 0 0.125. Again, should clean your desyncs right up. Number five, D-Shot Idle. If you're trying to push out that last little bit of prop wash and you have everything else all tuned in, one thing to pay some attention to is the motor idle throttle value here. If you bump this up, it's gonna obviously help with prop wash because it's not gonna let your motor spin down as idle. Obviously, it's going to impact your hang time if you're inverted, but depending on the pilot, you might not be inverted hang time that much. Just give it a shot. Try pushing this up to six, 6.5, seven, and check out the difference in your prop wash performance. It makes a marketable change. 
Obviously, prop wash is one of the hardest things to address in flight performance. So you you know you got to have your filters right, your pids right, and then this D shot idle is another thing to take a look at to just kind of get it the best it can be. Okay, well that is it. Hopefully those are some tips to help you tweak in your setups and maybe increase some flight performance on your quad. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped. And like smash that like button, please, cause. Then I if if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So, do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?